What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tackle Bassin. Today we're talking winter time Alabama rig fishing, cold weather, cold water, A rig fishing. You know, the A rig, when it first busted on the scene, it was a game changer, right? It was the win all, catch all, do all bait, but uh, there's really a learning curve to the Alabama rig, and Matt and I, it took us a little while to understand its potential, how to fish it. We've done A rig videos in the past, but today I want to walk you guys through some rigging, some fishing techniques, and some tips to help you guys catch more fish on the Alabama rig. So right off the bat, when and where do you throw an A rig? It is cold right here in California. Right now it's cold, it's, it's, it's freezing almost every night, but those bass have the shad and the bait fish all balled up. You know, typically in the springtime, in the fall, you're fishing shallow, you're covering a lot of water, you're finding those schools of fish, and you're fishing the A-rig through them. Winter time is a little bit different. You guys have seen in previous videos us offshore spooning or fishing very deep in the, in the, in the cold weather months, right? An A-rig in the winter time is a phenomenal bait. So today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how to rig the A-rig for wintertime fishing. Typically, this time of year, I fish them 15 to 60 feet of water, depending on where the bait fish are. Where the bass have the bait fish corralled, pinned up, that's where I'm going to target. So, the A-Rig, the first thing you need to do is look at your state regulations on the Alabama rig. Some states you can't fish it, some states you can only have two hooks, California you can only have three hooks. Some states you can have as many hooks as you want. So, do some research, look up your state regulations on the Alabama rig. So right off the bat, you can see it right here, I have a five wire A rig. Got some blades on here, got some teaser baits, and I got my baits back here with hooks, right? These are the baits that I want the fish to eat. So, one tip, always put your biggest bait or your different looking bait in the rear nine times out of ten they're going to hit hit the bait that's either the farthest back or the lowest that's where you want your bait with the hook so there's all different types of a rigs on the market you got bladed rigs you have rigs that don't have any blades on them at all you have three wire five wire eight wire the purpose of an Alabama rig is to mimic a school of bait fish, right? So you want it to look as natural as possible, although it's got blades and wires and everything. So a tip that I want to really emphasize is get an A rig that has light wire. And what I mean by that, typically on an A rig, when you fire it out there and you reel it back, you can get bit. But a way to really increase your bites is to get an A-Rig that has a lot of movement. So when you're reeling it, give it some rod twitches or some reel twitches and get that whole school to pulsate, to kind of condense and expand like a, a natural school of bait. So get an A-Rig that has some really light wire, something that flexes. So when you do do those reel twitches or the rod tw uh, twitches, that bait, that school, that A-Rig has a lot of action. Again, 15 to 60 feet of water and the 60 feet might throw you guys off. One tip that I've learned and Matt, we've, we've had a lot of success fishing an A-Rig deep. Those same fish that are out deep suspended over bait in 40, 50, 60 feet, they can be caught with a heavy A-Rig. Pull this guy out over here. This one's actually, uh, this is the, Yum, Flash Mob Junior. And just like every video, I'm gonna link all the all the specifics, the baits, the A-rigs, the terminal tackle, the accessories, all that stuff will be linked down below in the video description. But this is a this is a Flash Mob Junior by Yum. This has a little bit more stout wire, and I like this one because I put a three-quarter ounce head and two halves on here. 
So what this, what this allows me to do, fire it out there, let it sink, let it get down to that, that depth, that 30, 40, 50, 60 feet depth, and then I can creep it, right? And with these heavy heads on here, it keeps that bait down and level and the bait doesn't want to, the, the A-Rig doesn't want to climb or rise. You can keep it down and fish those depths where fish haven't necessarily seen an Alabama rig before. You guys remember how hot they were when they came on first on the scene. Uh, they were, like I said, the, the win all, catch all, do all. But there is a there is a learning curve to them. So an Alabama rig can be deadly this time of year. When you find those offshore bass, when you find them offshore and they got the shad or whatever your bait fish have schooled up, the, the silver sides or something like that, you want to mimic the bait size. My favorite baits for an A-Rig, I have three of them. Number one is gonna be the Kitek, the Swing Impact Fat. That's a 4.3, phenomenal size. I use the 3.8s, the 4.3s, and the 4.8s in this, depending on the bait fish size. Another good one, the Strike King, the Rage Swimmer. Same thing, same sizes. And then the Reaction Innovations Skinny Dipper. All these baits have a little bit different action and uh, you can play around with that. I like to mix them up. Sometimes I'll put skinny dippers as my teasers. For those who aren't familiar with teasers, those are your baits up here without hooks on them. So I'll run skinny dippers up here and some Kitex down here or vice versa to give that school a little bit different look, to get a little different action. This rig right here is all Kitex. I have 3.8s up here and 4.8s right as my three with hooks. You don't, all, you don't want your whole school to look the same. Your teasers, you want to be smaller, less desirable than your baits with hooks. So blades, I like throwing an A-Rig with blades. If it's super clear, gin clear, I'll throw a rig that doesn't have blades. You know, I feel like I don't have, I don't need that extra flash or vibration. The fish can see it from a long ways. I'll just go with two teasers and the baits, no flash. But if I'm fishing stained water, dirty water, muddy water, that's where I'm gonna have blades on. I typically run silver blades. Unless the water is really dingy or really muddy, then I will switch them out to gold blades. But you guys will wanna play around with different color blades in your fisheries. So we shot videos in the past about rigging an A-Rig, but I know we have so many new subscribers now. I want to run through it very quickly, how to properly set up an A-Rig, and then I'll show you this finished product. So out of the package, when you go to the store and you buy an Alabama rig, you typically have the wires, you may or may not have blades, and then you have the terminal tackle down here, your swivels and your snaps. A lot of the terminal tackle that come on these A-Rigs are not, eh, just get rid of them. So the first thing I do when I get an A-Rig out of the pocket package, this is, like, this, like I said, this is the, uh, the Flash Mob Junior. They got a few different models out, but you can see this one's already pre-bent. If you pull a rig out of the package and all the wires are straight, do not bend them right at the head. You see how right here, how there's about a quarter of an inch and then the bends start? If you bend them right at the head, you'll break the resin up here and you'll actually lose um, durability on your A-Rig. So if it's not pre-bent, you're gonna bend it like this. You're gonna go one, 45 out the degree this way, and what a 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, and one straight back. Or you can take this one and bend that one down and bend these up. Depends on how you want to run them, but we can stick with this one straight. So after I pull it out of the package and I bend it how I like it, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the terminal tackle that comes on it because again, this they're not as, uh, as good as the uh, the stuff like the owner the owner uh, hyperwire split rings, the power uh, the Spro power swivels, and uh, I just have had better luck with 
taking the stock stuff off and putting on nicer stuff. So the things that you're gonna need for that, you're gonna want owner hyper wire split rings, either size four or five. You could probably get away with threes if you're throwing a finesse rig. You're gonna want some owner centering pins. And how these work, these are little pins that screw onto the top of the rig. And you take this centering pin and you stick it right in the face of your teaser bait. Remember, teaser does not have a hook. Right in the face and twist it on. So owner hyperwire split rings and the centering pins are a must have. The next thing you're gonna wanna figure out is what type of swim bait head are you gonna use? What type of fish are you fishing for? Are you fishing for big large mouth? Are you fishing for finicky spots, small mouth? Some of the, my favorite hooks I like to use, if I'm going for uh, smaller fish, or I'm fishing a, a reservoir and I'm fishing for spotted bass, I'm gonna go with the dirty jigs. This is actually their HD swim bait head. Smaller head, light wire hook. If I'm going with uh, like out here on Clear Lake and I'm fishing for big bass, I'm actually gonna use Matt's signature head, the Matt Allen swim bait head. It's got larger head and a lot bigger hook. Those big California bass, those big large mouth aren't gonna bend that guy out. So depending on your fishery, those are kind of the two hooks that I use. If you wanna go real small, you could use like a little guppy head or a little underspin, something like that. But down below, I will link my favorite hooks for the A-Rig. So getting back to actually rigging it. So we bent it, we cut off the stock terminal tackle, we put on an owner hyper wire split ring, and we put on our swim bait head. You can see this rig right here, this is a summertime rig for me. This is a really light head. I got three eight ounce heads, so it keeps the overall rig fairly small and easy to fish shallow water. You know, less than a foot of water, two feet, three feet under docks. You don't have a big head and a heavy bait that you can, you know, catch a lot of junk up on. So I like to run really light stuff in the summertime, but wintertime, like I said, Wintertime's a great time to size up and throw those heavy heads. Find those fish that are out schooling on your bait fish and put an A-rig down to them. Now specifically wintertime fishing. You know, in, in past videos you've seen us get offshore and vertically fish like a spoon or a flutter spoon, something like that, a tail spin. An A-rig is another bait that you want to try out there. Now wintertime Again, Matt just did that video, where do fish go in the winter? Fish are typically gonna go deep. So that's why I'm throwing a three quarter ounce head, two half ounce heads. That bait gets out there, it gets down deep, it stays deep. But as far as just casting it, reeling it, it works great. It stays down, stays level, good stuff. Another way to fish these is actually vertically fish them. Get above the fish, get on top of the fish let this thing three three quarter ounce heads or uh, you know a three quarter ounce and two halves it's a fairly heavy rig fall quickly through that school and then burn it up free spool let it fall and get that reaction bite get that that trigger trigger those fish in that school to eat the a rig and a lot of times you'll get the biggest fish out of the school so winter time i like to upsize my heads if i'm fishing deep water so we kind of blew through rigging, you know, cut the stuff off that comes on most rigs, put nicer terminal tackle on there, you know, your split rings, your swivels, snaps if you want. Another thing you're going to want to do is put a split ring and a swivel on the head of the bait. That way you don't get a lot of line twists. Fishing an A-rig, always check your bait. As you're coming back to the boat, make sure that you're that your swim baits with hooks are swimming straight. You don't want them looking stupid. And then check your teasers too. Sometimes they'll they'll spin if you leave the swivel on the top. 
if you don't just go straight from the wire to a centering pin, they will sw they'll swivel. So check that and make sure that they're swimming upright. If you need to adjust them, just t twist them tighter or loosen them a little bit, quarter of a turn, and get them swimming straight. So wintertime A rigging, again, backs of coves. Fire right down the middle of that cove. Let that, let that bait fall to a certain depth wherever you think the fish are or you know they are and just start reeling. Now with the A-Rig, you can catch fish just reeling, right? But the trick with the A-Rig is to make it look like it's alive. Make it look like a, a school of fish. So you're gonna wanna give it reel twitches or rod twitches because what that's gonna do, that's gonna make that school that's swimming along compress and then expand compress and expand and nine times out of ten right after that twitch that's when you're gonna get bit you know there is a learning curve to a rigs like i said before you know watching a lot of fish catches some of our footage matt and i we noticed that most of the times we got bit was right after we made movement to that school as far as gear i typically like a seven and a half foot medium to medium heavy rod, depending on how heavy of a rig I'm throwing. If I'm throwing a light rig, you know, like the G rig, and I'm I got three, you know, eight ounce heads, you can get away with a medium uh, rod. If you're throwing a heavier rod, I'm, I'm sorry, a heavier rig, you're gonna want a heavier rod, something like a light swim bait rod or a big swim bait rod, because this is getting up there in a, you know, close to a couple ounces. As far as reel and line, that's completely up to you. I typically throw a braid to leader. I feel that if a fish is gonna eat a face full of wire, I'm not too worried about uh, line size, but uh, some people prefer straight fluorocarbon. I like braid to mono leader. I'll throw 30 to 65 pound braid, depending on the body of water I'm fishing and the fish I'm targeting. And then my mono leader will be 12 to 30 pounds. Uh, all, like I said, all depends on the size of the fish we're going after. But the A-Rig, it is uh, a tool, right? It's another tool in the arsenal to put fish in the boat. Guys, if you're new to A-Rigging, uh, it is something that you should go out and try. Again, look at your, your state's regulations. Make sure that you have the right hook count on your rig and uh, go out and cast and reel them back, guys. Again, reel twitch, rod twitch, puts more fish in the boat for you guys. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section, Matt and I will get to those. But winter time A-rigging, it is a bait that you guys should be definitely throwing. You might catch your PB, it definitely helps put fish in the boat. If you guys like that video, hit the thumbs up button. If you guys like our channel, remember to subscribe to it. We're doing three videos a week for you guys. Share it with your friends. We appreciate you. Have a good one. Thank you